Okay, we are recording. Three, two, one, record. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 98. And we're going to dub this Encryption is Not a Crime. We're uh, recording Wednesday, November 18th. So you're but you're going to hear it following right before your Thanksgiving commute, just because that's the way we uh, do things here. But I guess the main topic today is is obviously talking about the Paris bombings, and we really want to talk about how encryption is not a crime. You're going to hear a lot of techno panic. You're going to hear a lot of they use PlayStation Network, which has been now debunked, but to do all these things, and now we have to take down everything, and and what the knee jerk reaction should and and shouldn't be. So, so I have, I'm going to be like sort of a civilian here and Tom's going to tell us how the techno panic is very strong and we should be weary of what we hear. Yes. Now, personally, I'm in absolute favor of, uh, you know, disclosing everything. I think everyone's credit card numbers should be, uh, pasted like uh, name tags on, uh, on their shirts. Uh, social security numbers should be completely public information and uh, identity theft. You shouldn't do it because you're a bad person, but we shouldn't worry about it because hiding things is a crime. You well, know, I, I think me starting out with like a sarcastic quip is kind of becoming like a, a meme of this show. I've done it for like the past three episodes now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it, it, no, it's good to start off with something a little comical because I mean, we, we, we have a really, we, it's, you want to bring some lighthearted thing to, to security because people hear security and their eyes start glazing over. Yeah. I mean, I, so, so the big story is that, how do we not see these bombers coming and they used encryption and now we need to break it. We have to, everything now is for terrorism. We're going to stop the terrorism tag on it. And, and, and what I've told people is that encryption is not a crime. Terrorism is. Yeah. It's, I, I hate this knee jerk reaction because I, I, it seems like the world at large uh, is really into these knee-jerk reactions. And right now it's leading to uh, techno panic, uh, which is just fantastic for security people. Well, let's ask you um, this. Let's start with, with I gave you an analogy earlier, and I yeah. think I like it. I I mean, I don't know how you feel about guns, and and we, can, we don't necessarily need to discuss this, but it, I, I want to say that here you have this, this idea that the terrorists use encryption and that's the common theme. And so we should take away all encryption. Nothing should be encrypted and you can make an analogy just be, and we say, Hey, wait a second. No, you can't just take away encryption because good people use encryption. And I said, think about guns. Every time you hear a mass shooting, we need to do gun reform and we need to do this. We need to take away guns. And, and I look at it as guns are not the crime. They're a tool used by a whole bunch of different people for many different reasons. And yes, one or two people do bad things, but we have to take a look at what we're doing before we do anything. And I, I want to lighten that up to encryption is the same way. I, I don't think it's a, it's a watertight analogy uh, because, you know, in, in the absolute worst mishandling uh, of a gun, you have an accidental death, right? If someone misuses a gun, if a kid gets a hold of it, you know, they, they kill someone or themselves. It's a tragedy at that point. But if you misuse encryption, the, I, I think possibly the worst thing that can happen when you misuse encryption, when you hand it to someone who has absolutely no idea what they're doing is they use it wrong uh, and their message is plain text. It's leaked out. It, the encryption just doesn't work. Uh, so I, I don't really like the gun analogy, but you know we we can roll with it a little bit just to 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 draw some parallels. You know uh, the classic thing that comes up uh, whenever people dis discuss gun control is, well, if you take away the guns for the people who will obey the law. Um, the only people left with guns are people who operate outside of the law, and we have a word for those people. They're called criminals, right? Uh, if, if you do the same thing with encryption, the only thing you're going to do is drive it underground, right? There are going to be the people who listen uh, and decide to do all of their banking over clear text connections because all encryption is now outlawed. Um, or, or let's let's even uh, you know pepper this with a little bit more reality. Let's say they say, well, HTTPS doesn't count, right? Only stuff like PGP or Signal or OTR counts, uh, technologies that allow people to communicate securely in that manner. The, it, 
I, I have issues even even giving the thought of someone trying to do this a, a little bit of clearance in my brain because it, it can't happen, right? These are open standards. It's math. It's computer code. The only way you're going to get rid of encryption, uh, it, the only way you're going to get rid of these protocols is you're going to have to shut down the internet entirely, and it just doesn't work that way. You just can't do it. You have to stop math. You have to be better. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't stop math. Yeah, uh, and and that's what people are not understanding, and and it goes back to another idea that since people are bad, they don't understand math. They're like, well, there has to be a way to, there has to be someone smarter than me that can break math, and, and you have to understand that that doesn't work. It's that's uh, why uh, people are math. I mean, you you can, I mean, you can you can absolutely break the math. You can absolutely break encryption. You know, it'll just take in most cases uh, way 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 longer than. You know the investigator's lifetime, uh, or or even the suspect's lifetime. You know, way, way huge amounts of time to to break encryption. Um, but you know, uh, trying to outlaw encryption is trying to like outlaw two plus two. You cannot do it, right? It's out in the world. People know that two plus two equals four, uh, and they know that you know if I run this stuff through GPG or Signal or AES or whatever technology you're going to use, if I put, if I use a computer in this particular way, using this particular math, the end result is secure communication. Uh, well, if, I, if you outlaw that, if you put everyone on a suspect list that uses PGP, which by the way, the NSA does today, um, you know, you're, you're only diluting your your valid suspect list, right? I mean, you and I have exchanged PGP messages that have been anything from, you know, hey, here's this cool link to test message. I want to make sure my keys work. <laughs> and and now we're on the NSA's list, right? I mean, and we, I, we send test messages all the time. Every time yeah. PGP updates, I send you a test message. And, just to and make those, sure it works. Those go into the NSA's database, and now they have to flag us and do a, a, you know, put us on whatever list that they have of potential bad people that use encryption. Um, where, you know, criminals, terrorists, bad people the world over uh, are also lumped into this list. So throwing you and I in there just dilutes the list, right? It just hides the criminals and the actual bad people better. Uh, encryption shouldn't be on the table here. Uh, you know, there, there are signals people can use, but uh, encryption is not one of them. And you, you just can't stop it. Well, the problem is, is that people hear about this. There's some super geniuses, whether they watch CSI Cyber, which by the way, I've never watched, or they're watching uh, Scorpion and they're, and you see these super nerds typing really fast at a computer and saying, oh, I got it. I broke their encryption. I did this and I did that. And I think they start wondering, how come we can't do this? Why aren't we breaking encryption? Why aren't we doing this? And the answer is, is that it's not that easy. And, and people are going to always make it harder. It's a cat and mouse game. And so far, uh, the, the the PGP style encryption hasn't been cracked yet. And so, and so, for the people who want this privacy, who want this stuff, they can't have it. Oh, my phone just rang, and now I'm all disillusioned. Like, what's going on? They they can't. They have this PGP, and they can't stop. Like, they 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 want to break into it. And and look, in order to keep us safe, we need to monitor this stuff. Maybe, but you know what? Get a warrant. I feel like good police work is always better, as they're finding out now. Police work is solving the crimes more so than than doing this this big net and trying to catch everything. Yeah, you know if. if... People tend to forget their history. Uh, good police work and good detective work uh, it caught criminals before the internet, before mass surveillance, before uh, you know 2004 when the NSA started building these programs. Right? We still caught criminals and bad guys and child pornographers and terrorists and everyone you want to put on this list because they use encryption. You know, before mass surveillance was a thing, these people still got caught. Right? And today it. Do not listen to the FBI. These people are still being caught, right? Just because encryption exists doesn't mean that all police work has shuddered to a grinding halt. That is absolutely not the case. 
uh, because in the majority of cases, people aren't using encryption. And even if people do, criminals are dumb, right? There have been cases where you know people have used um, you know encrypted uh, containers like TrueCrypt or VeraCrypt, and they still got caught because you know they left stuff logged in, or someone got a wire warrant, or someone uh, you know grabbed data from them. Uh, in a sting operation. I mean, there's, there's lots of different ways around this. Uh, outlawing encryption just is kind of a stupid knee-jerk reaction. It actually won't help you very much. Look, you can encrypt everything, but if you fail to encrypt your backups, you've just given them everything and you just made your right. life infinitely harder. And I mean, it's, it's one of those things. You have to do it all. You have to be on your game all the time. And that one slip up, now they're saying they found a cell phone somewhere with this and that and the other stuff. One slip up destroys everything. Yeah, and it, there's there's no way, uh, and I, I, I don't want to sound defeatist, but there's absolutely no way to stop bad things from happening, right? The, the attacks were, are horrific right? No one wants this to happen. No one likes that this happens, but it's going to keep happening, right? You, you can try to, to make elaborate defenses, right? We can, we can lock ourselves in our home. We can never come out. Uh, we, we can, you know, have police just stop and frisk everyone every moment of every day that goes anywhere in public. It's not going to stop bad things from happening, right? You cannot solve uh, violence 100%. It's going to happen. Um, there, there are things we can do to stop it from happening, or not stop it, but, you know, try to minimize the cases, but there's no bulletproof answer here, and encry stopping encryption <laughs> certainly doesn't help anything, uh, right? You know, expanding uh, mental health programs to help stop mass shootings uh, is probably a better idea than, <laughs> than banning encryption. It's it's one of those. I think the best thing that's that's going on is if people see something, they should say something. And and New York City has that all over the subways. If you see something, this this idea now that we're constantly recording is actually a good thing because we're now noticing more and more sus suspicious behavior. And I think that's the way we're starting to catch people. Whether it was the fail, it was the shoe bomber back in I don't know '05. Now somebody saw something, they said something. And I don't think that, that the FBI taking a mass blanket and capturing all this data is obviously, it's obviously not working, but what is working are people standing up and saying, wait, this looks weird. I probably should call the police and we should investigate. Yeah, just good old fashioned police work and people paying attention. You know, we, we tend to forget that, uh, you know, in the Snowden leaks, after everything broke, one of the big things that came out was, you know, People asking the question, hey, has mass surveillance, has your program stopped any terrorist attack, right? Has it protected us in any way? And the resounding answer was no. There's no evidence whatsoever that these programs have made us safe in any way. It's just a catch-all, grab-all thing, and they can't stop it because, you know, no government entity wants to give up their budget. Um, no, no government entity wants to say, yeah... You know, now that you say that, I guess we are pretty useless. Let's fire everyone. It's just human nature to want to protect what you've built. But the facts are in. Mass surveillance doesn't work. Well, you had the TSA, the new report by the TSA basically said they can't stop anything. 95% yeah. of everything that loaded guns on planes and everything, yeah. you can't stop anything. And so us walking through the metal detectors and this and that, no effect. And, and it's one of those, you want to feel safer. You want to believe that this works. But really, in reality, no, not working. And and it's it's sad that we are, like you said, nobody wants to give up their budget, but we're spending this money when we should figure out a way to do it smarter. And I don't know what smarter is. I don't get paid enough to think that much. I don't get enough money to think like that. But whatever smarter is, that's what we need to be doing. Yeah, the the TSA is a whole other ball of wax. So I'm sure we could go into, but you know, it, packing as many people in an airport as you can into a really tight area where they're all next to each other with everyone's baggage in one place does not scream 
security to me. You know what that screams? It screams, oh, hey, if I wanted to bomb a lot of people in a very tight-knit area, that's probably the place to do it. Uh, it's, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure this out. And everyone knows that the TSA doesn't actually do anything. It's security theater, and it's to make you feel good when you're you know, getting frisked by the TSA agent for the third time in the airport. Uh, it, there's no benefit to it. It's, it's a giant waste of money and an even bigger waste of time. And unfortunately, we still do it, and it's, people still feel safe. Look, yeah. I was watching, so I'm watching CNN, and they interviewed Matthew, Matthew Green over a uh, cryptography expert, and that's when they first started saying everything was encrypted. And, of course, the answer is, and I got a little annoyed because he was trying to imply that maybe we should start looking at encryption and having people try and break it, and I was screaming at the TV, no, this is not what we need. We need to find other ways because breaking encryption is obviously not the answer because people are just going to do, do uh, come up with a n- new encryption scheme. And again, you have criminals are going to be criminals. So I don't know where we go from here, but there was a really good New York Times uh, image that I that somebody shared with me basically saying, what are the most safest messaging platforms that, that, that there are? And it was funny that we talk about all these. And now somebody else, the the bad guys are verifying this. And they're saying that Signal is the safest. Signal, silent circle, red phone, which is all chat secure, which is all the open whisper system things. Yeah, the, these are all, you know, open source goodness. Um, you know, one one thing that I we do have to mention, uh, this will be in the show notes, uh, Telegram, if you're using it, run away screaming. Uh, do not use Telegram. They have, uh, the only thing they do well is marketing. They have a great marketing team. Uh, they've gotten a lot of people to use their app, and they've convinced a lot of people that it's secure. But it, from the encryption to the end-to-end protocol, literally everything about Telegram is broken. Uh, they did, they broke rules number one and two of Crypto Club, which is you do not write your own crypto, and rule number two is you do not write your own crypto. Uh, They broke those rules, they wrote their own crypto, and guess what, it's fundamentally broken in every way. Uh, Now, you know, the the great things on this list, like you're saying, Chat Secure, Red Phone, Silent Circle, uh, OSTEL, which I haven't used, I can't speak to it, uh, but Signal, I mean, we talked about Signal, when it came out. It's fantastic. It's easy to use. It's verified secure. It's open source. It's made by Moxie Marlin Spike. I mean, this it's got all the check boxes. Uh, it's verified to be, you know, one of the best messaging platforms you can use. Uh, so I, I highly recommend going to it. Uh, we talked about Threema before. Threema's great. Well, Threema is on Threema and Wicker and SureSpot are on the quote unquote safe list, not the safest, right. but the safe list. And I mean, I was looking at Telegram. I'm trying to find people are asking me. You say that you 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 say that run away, run away, run away. You don't do this, but it's still being used. EFF gave it all the green check marks. It's really like you said. There's marketing. Something's hiding there. With, other than rolling your own crypto, which. I don't think has been broken yet or it has. Fixing, it has it, it just it, it there's no like brand new 2015 november 2015 saying this is broken the only thing you see is from years ago and it's hard because it's getting stale that information yeah it's so they're they're still using their uh homegrown crypto which they say is way more secure than anything else out there but you know, the, what they're using, uh, and, and this article in particular, uh, pointing out its flaws, uh, it's still valid. These are still valid criticisms, and this has been updated uh, over the years uh, with everything else, um, with, with all, you know, new information as they break it further. But it's... Um, it's, it's, look, I agree with you. I mean, I yeah. tell people run away. The hard part is is to say it's broken. They rolled their own crypto, and and, and now you're getting into this uh, idea that that it's it's fun it's fundamentally broken, and you and I get it. But to tell the average person, hey, they did this. It's been broken, but it's you you want to use this. It's use this other program. I don't understand why you can't just say use Signal. Signal is excellent. I it's it's yeah. free. It's there. It's been. It's open source. It's 
I've been using it now for a week. It's super simple to use, especially on Android. So I don't know why people have a problem moving to it. And it's not like there's this adoption that you have to tell people to move to it. If they don't want to use it, they don't have to. It's if if they do, you get encryption. If you don't, you get it's a regular text message client. So I'm looking at Wicker and Threema and SureSpot, which is a new one that looked pretty good. I don't know why it's on the safe list versus the, the safest list. Um, Threema, I can imagine, is on the safe list because it's not open source. That's, um, even though it's been audited, I agree with you. It's not open right. source. Yeah, it's it's not part of the, the perfect crowd that uh, Signal and Chat Secure are. And then you have Wicker, which had some... Some knocks on the EFF checklist that we that we've spoken about. It doesn't follow certain practices, but it's still pretty good. Right. Uh, I, I don't like this moderately safe list. Um, I really don't like this moderately safe list. Um, you know, BlackBerry Messenger. Uh, depending on what country you're in, the the government can look into those messages now because BlackBerry caved. Uh, and they said, oh, yeah, sure, we can break our encryption. Before, it was fantastic. It was a bulletproof end-to-end encrypted messaging service. But, uh, you know, now that they had to uh, I cooperate with all of these governments, it's just trash. Um, you know, iMessage, uh, FaceTime, uh, it's, it's end-to-end encrypted, but Apple is holding the keys. So you have to trust Apple. If Apple gets a subpoena or an NSA letter... You're done well, at what that are the, point. But what they're saying that they can't, it's encrypted end to end, it's decrypted on the phone. They can't do it anymore. So I guess. Well, well that, they, they, they control the keys. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's, when you have someone else control the keys, when you're not uh, doing it yourself, when it's not present on device and on device only, um, you're you're trusting someone else. Yeah. Uh, Hangouts and Facebook Messenger should not be on this on the moderately safe list at all. Uh, well, Hangouts Hangouts is using SSL, but it's not end to end encrypted. Well, all. here's what I find interesting is that uh, Facebook Messenger is moderately safe. Where WhatsApp, which which has the ch- has the the open whisper systems technology built in, is unsafe. Which right. maybe because the definition is WhatsApp is a complete text message replacement client. So so unless they're both using WhatsApp, I don't know. I, I would yeah, think it's, which uh, WhatsApp would be moderately safe. It's it's odd. Um, you know, with with WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, you're trusting Facebook uh, with those with the keys and security. Uh, you know, Facebook Messenger, I don't think it's end to end encrypted at all. I don't think it's anything. Um, so, so it's it's in SSL, but that's it. And uh, we we do know that the NSA loves to break or mint their own SSL certificates. I mean, they go straight. I mean, I think that's the first thing they do. They go straight to Facebook, and and they 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 get all the information they can get. So, look, it's it's one of those things that, and then we're finding out it's it's one of those things. It's. I've used Signal the last week. I love it. I think it's great. And we had a question from some uh, from a listener who's saying, "I'm just setting up. Why can't I use? I want to use Telegram." And I and I initially said, "Hey, wait a second. If you're just setting up, you have no you have no prior prior allegiances. If you're setting up a group, just everyone start with uh, Signal. It's open. It's open source. It's on every device. It's everywhere, either iOS or Android. Just it just start by using far. It by far the easiest uh, and best uh, when it comes to UI and usability secure chat program I've ever used. I thought Threema was easy, but Signal just blows it out of the water. There's there's no setup, I mean, really no setup at all. Uh, you put in your phone number, it goes, oh, okay, here's your verification text and done. And if, if there's either a little padlock icon if the other person's using Signal or it's just an SMS. And like I said, this guy was saying we're starting a new community in, I guess, uh, in, I don't know, he didn't tell me where, but he, he's starting it. And I was thinking, oh, maybe people have SMS, maybe they have this, maybe they're using iMessage. And the answer is if it doesn't matter, just start start from the beginning and start with the best. There's no reason to pay for something or use something proprietary. This is built on open standards and it looks like it's only going to get more popular. Yeah, so. as it should. Uh, but you know, this, this knee jerk reaction of the, the world saying, Hey, we need to outlaw encryption. And then 
the awful terrorist attacks just piled you know the the FBI and everyone's uh, every government statements onto the fire uh, it's just it's ridiculous uh, banning encryption would not have stopped this. They want to and stop I, Facebook. They want to stop social media because they use PlayStation Network, which we found was not true. And World of Warcraft, obviously World of Warcraft needs to be stopped and we need to get injunctions and everything <laughs> else. We, we should really ban all forms of communication. I think uh, if, if we banned speaking or communicating entirely amongst the human race, we might be able to stop the terrorists. I mean, you you hear things, and this was a criticism of nine eleven. Oh, we had we had we had information back in August that something was going to happen. Yeah, the problem is is that when you get hundreds of threats a day, you have to figure out which one's credible. It's impossible. There's not enough money. There's not enough manpower to figure this out. Just because we collect the data, I don't know what we do with the data. Somebody has to look at it. So, right. Yeah, we've we've got, you know, machine learning and algorithms and a, a lot of different ways to slice this data and to try to analyze it. But right now, you know, we've we've seen the results. It hasn't done anything. It hasn't helped anyone. So it's just and now that, what people don't understand, and I was trying to explain this to my students today, is that. Before, you're looking at all the data. I give you hundreds of sheets of data. You may figure out, you may be able to put in connections, but now that computers are so fast and so powerful, you can train them to look for the connections and they'll just hand it to you. So it's not that it's not that data is bad. You can inundate someone with hundreds of uh, whatever pieces of paper, or, or you could DDoS somebody and just kill them with paperwork, but putting it into a computer, it'll take seconds. And they'll be able to spit this nice report out for you. And that's more of the problem is that you can grab all this and you can look for certain keywords and certain patterns and it'll just pop it out. And, and so. then and then these government agencies, you know, trust that report like, you know, it's it's the immutable word of God or something. And and what happens is, you know, just like bombing a hospital or bombing a wedding party, you know, these horrible things happen because we absolutely trust the intel we're getting is correct. And, you know, let's let's give them a little slack. It's correct more often than it's not correct, right? It has to be. But these sort of things do happen when we don't take a measured stance, when, when we just accept everything these machines output as fact and go on that. You know, we end up bombing wedding parties of completely innocent people in you know uh, uh, another country well, it's hospital ridiculous. happened last week and everything else yeah. and, and look it's 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 a byproduct of of all this all this data grabbing and number crunching and everything else and yes it's terrible that it's happened but unfortunately these are these these things do happen and it's sad but we can't just go around saying because this happened we need to ban it Right. It's it's the typical knee-jerk reaction of government entities. Um, yeah, it just, just understand that when someone talks about building in back doors, um, it, it cannot be done safely. There's no way to do it safely. Uh, it's, it's impossible to do uh, without, you know, major, major risks to the public at large. Uh, and, you know, when, when it comes to just trying to ban this, uh, sure, take, uh, take any math textbook uh, and try to get rid of the mathematical principles inside of it. Just get rid of two plus two equals four. Just try to try to ban that. That's what banning encryption is like. You can't do it. And they'll just come up with a new system. I mean, same thing. And now you're going to ban that. Right. Yeah, there's there's no way. And the, the tech is open source. It's out there. The, the algorithms are publicly known. Uh, the stuff is commonplace, right? Uh, it, you know, you may not know it, but every phone you hold in your hand has got several different cryptographic functions that it uses daily. Uh, you know, probably the, the most common one that uh, we're actually using right now, it's right here in the corner of the browser, HTTPS, right? We're using TLS, we're using, uh, you know, a, a tunnel to throw our data into, and no one can see what's going through that tunnel except the endpoints, except the server that's generating it and our computers here that are connected to it. Except the parties that are able to see this data that are allowed to, no one else can. And that's a great thing. You can't ban that without 
shutting down the internet at large. And even then, you would have to get rid of every computer on the planet that has a copy of these algorithms. Uh, it's, it's just impossible. You cannot ban encryption. Well, on that note, we're really out of time. And so hopefully we get a lot more good information coming out of the, out of the articles to figure out how they did it and what they did and how hopefully to try and stop these people from it happening again. Anyway, it's been a good show. We'll talk. We'll see everyone next week. See you, everyone. Bye, everyone.